Welcome to the morning worship service. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord God Almighty, he is the King of glory. This is your call to worship. Let us unite in the historic confession of faith. What is it that we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your dear Son, giving you all the praise and all the glory for bringing us here together to worship you through music and the Word of God. Lord God, we just thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins, the sins that we've knowingly done and those that we have done unknowingly. Lord God, we just ask that you continue to bless our land, keep all of us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. For those who are ill at this time, Lord, we just ask that you place your healing hands upon their body so that they will be made whole again. Lord God, we ask for those who are still suffering from bereavement, that you wrap your comforting arms around them and let them know that your love surrounds them in this time as they mourn the loss of their loved one. Lord God, we just ask that you continue to be with the leaders of our country and of our states and of our local governments, that they will make sure that they're doing all that they can to uplift the people and not to push them down any longer. Lord God, we just ask that you be with all the ministers, our teachers, students, anyone who is out there being essential to help people as we continue to go through this pandemic. Lord, in just another month and a half, we will have been in this pandemic for two years. And we are continuing to lean on you as you guide us through. As some of us have been affected or exposed, you continue to keep us safe. And for those whose lives have been lost, you continue to uplift us with their memories and the love for that particular loved one. Lord God, we ask that you bless the minister today as she brings forth your word 
healing words, inspiring words, encouraging words to give us a little more strength on this journey. Lord God, we just love you and we bless your holy name and it's in your son's name that we do pray. Amen. Stood on the banks of Jed and one day. Stood on the banks of Jordan, yes I did. Lord, to see the ship go by. I stood on the banks of Jordan, thank God, to see. Standing here on the journey, 
Our preacher for this morning is the Reverend Jaretha Wright. Reverend Rita, as she is affectionately known, is an inspirational preacher, often recognized for her authentic, humorous, and intellectual approach to addressing topics that inspire and challenge God's people to a higher call in life. Reverend Rita attends St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Huntsville, Alabama, where her colleague, pastor, and life partner is the senior pastor, the Reverend Maurice Wright II. She also values the spiritual and loving support of her children, Terrence, who is a U.S. Coast Guardman, Guardsman, Lessie, Isaiah, and Joy. Reverend Rita is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, where she and I met as line sisters. Reverend Rita is most passionate about liberating teen girls and young adult women by empowering them to be heard, seen, and valued for the purpose of strengthening female humanity. She is an entrepreneur, author, dog mom, Starbucks stalker, Laker lover, and daytime napper. She loves to teach water fitness, listen to older people tell their stories, train Dobermans, and sit in the park with senior citizens when the weather is friendly. Reverend Rita says, laughter saved my life. It helped me realize that even God can make life good and funny. After this next song, you will hear the words from God through Reverend Jaretha Wright. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you Just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than anything Yeah Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Mm -hmm. I lift my hands in total 
adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. Thank you. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Yeah. Come on, sing.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so excited to be here. Bless God. How's everybody doing? Y'all, this virtual life is just a lot for me. You guys gonna have to bear with me. I just want to first just thank you all for inviting me here um, this morning in support of the missionaries who are, um, your theme is embracing a new era of innovation for greater service. A new era of innovation for greater service. You know, that's exactly what's going on now because this COVID life has moved us all into a virtual setting. And so we have to be flexible. We got grandparents and great grandparents that are using social media and, you know, and using their phones to, 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 um, make, um, do video chats and run businesses. So this is an appropriate theme for this time. I also want to thank my friend, sister, and soror, Amy Clark, who always, always thinks of me whenever she is doing something in ministry. So I want to just extend a warm um, appreciation to her. And more than anything, I want to give my support and appreciation to um, Pastor Scott and all of the members at Philip CME for just offering this opportunity for me. I just really, really appreciate this time. I don't take it lightly, you all excuse me. I am trying to figure this stuff out. So bear with me. I just want also before I get started, if, if all the women in the room, wherever you are, just just this is just a decree i like to to impart on the women and just repeat after me god is my strength the devil is defeated and i have the victory it says god is my strength the devil is defeated and i have the victory there's one great thing about the bible is that although it is filled with different women from a different time, it speaks to each and every one of us right where we are today. So before I pray, I ask that you ponder these questions. Where are you in your life and how long have you been in that place? How many years has it been for you and how long have you been rebelliously doing things your way? Y'all know how we like to do stuff our way. How many years has it been for you? Are you the person hindering change in your own church? Mm -hmm. Do you have a whole lot of unsolved personal issues? You don't want to go to counseling. Mm -mm. You don't want to go. Mm -mm. Have you been running here and there trying to find that one thing or that one person that will answer all the questions to your problems? Women of God, it is time for an unexpected change. Let us pray. God, we thank you for all you have done and all for what you will do. God of mercy, we invoke the name of Jesus. We invoke the presence of Jesus, God. We invoke the thoughts of Jesus. We invoke the love of Jesus in this place, God. We invoke the power of Jesus. Lord, send your prayer into this moment and let the people of God, at the sound of my voice, invoke the grace and peace of Jesus by saying, Amen. Hallelujah. So, ladies, sisters, and brothers, you know, you guys are invited to. Don't you get tired of society telling us how to feel, what to wear, what to say, when to say it, where to say it, how to say it, and who to say it to? Who to date, how to date, where to date, who to live, why, how to live, when to live, and when to die. How to die, where to die, who to marry, how to marry, when to marry, where to marry what to get paid, how to get paid, when to get paid, and more than that, if you get paid at all. How often have you washed, cooked, cleaned, wept, slept, screamed, cried, scorned, mourned, and prayed all while bathing, driving, sighing, wiping, typing, calling, falling, running, jumping, combing, eating, and feeding any and everybody 
in your life except for yourself. Go ahead, raise your hand. It's me. Me. Some of y'all probably doing it right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Right now. Aren't you ready for a bit of a change? Women of God, what have we become? And how did we get there? How did you get to this place where where sometimes we just treat each other like foreign countries, unaware to the extremities that exist within each one of us? How did we get to a place where, you know, where we're being held hostage by our own pain, hostage by our bad habits, to our judgmental lynching of other women in our families and in our churches and in our departments and in our workplaces? This place where women have become codependent on society's disregard for our daughters, our mothers, our women, and sometimes disregard for ourselves. And many of us sit in silence doing absolutely nothing. Sometimes we cling to the oppressive frailties of life, those being poverty, sometimes abuse, And all the isms you can think of, sexism, racism, ageism, classism, some of us is sizeism, and criticism. How long before you take the steps to make some change? When will we as women change the way we think and treat one another? Oh, it's time for a change. The the text responds to this question with an unexpected change God sent to the people in Judges 4, 1 through 5. And I'll read it in summary. It began with the children of Israel once again doing evil in the sight of the Lord. They started again once the current righteous judge died, which was Ehud, when Israel stopped serving the Lord. The Lord would make them serve their enemies. This time they fell into the hands of a man named Jabin, the king of Canaan who ruled in Hazar. He had a captain whose name was Sisera and he lived in Harosheth where the Gentiles stayed. Jabin and Sisera oppressed Israel for 20 years and the oppressed was hard. The oppression was harsh. At this time, Israel's judge was a woman named Deborah, Deborah, Deborah. She was a prophetess. Yes, women like Moses and Moses' sister Miriam, they were prophets. Deborah sent for a man named Barak, not confused with President Obama, to help Israel overthrow their oppressors, King Jabin. Barak said he'd only lead the military if Deborah went with him. Deborah told him if she came, the glory would go to a woman. Don't get it twisted. You're not going to get the glory without me, woman, and not Barak. That is exactly what happened. A woman named Jael took the honor and glory. She was the wife of a man named Heber, a Kenite, who was the household of Moses' father-in-law. Barak and his army destroyed Caesarea's army, but Caesarea got away. Jael saw him and had him hid in her house. Now she was boss. Do not, you know how sisters are. We always got a black a backup plan, right? She hid him in her house. And when the brother fell asleep, she put a rusty tent nail through his head. Obviously, JL was not your average Barbie doll woman. Barak saw it and Israel further took down the rest of King Jabin's army. God subdued Israel's oppressors and grew stronger and stronger over the Canaanites. Deborah, what was it about her? What was it that qualified her to be a judge in that era? God selected her just as if God is going to select you or have selected you. Why did God select her out of all the women during that time? There was something different about her. There's something different about you. She was not regular. So go ahead and type in, I'm not regular. I'm not regular. I'm not the regular first lady. God choosing her was an unexpected change. So just let me briefly 
speak to you with my subject title being unexpected change. It is clear that the people were stuck in a cycle of sin and despair, publicly and unwillingly taking advantage of the land and opportunities that God had bestowed upon them. Like many of our people today refusing to wear masks when we all have been warned of the dangers of not wearing them. Some of us just stuck, refusing to roll over on Sundays, pick up the phone and scroll to church. Just stuck, complaining about church being way too long before COVID. Now church is too short, stuck. It is time for the women of God to raise the standard and stick to it. Your will to change should be far greater than your ability to remain the same. Such is the examples of the people of Israel. As a preacher, business owner, I'm a wife and mother. I'm often taxed to the very last drop, tired. Some days I got nothing and it seems like that's when I have the most work to do. And as a preacher, business owner, wife and mother, this COVID life has changed so many of us. Insomnia, come on now, fear, anxiety. I had COVID, I'm still having long COVID. What's long COVID? A short COVID was enough, but long COVID, grief. And then I asked God myself, I said, God, why me? And then God reminded me why I was chosen. I remember my face was full of tears and I was walking past a mirror and something said just to stop. And so I stopped and I looked in the mirror and God said to me, because you are more than enough. So today, my sisters, my women in Christ, I want you to know that you are more than enough. Go ahead and say that I am more than enough. No one will expect to see you coming. Not in this season. They won't see you coming. Dearest sister, your call is great. Everyone you have charged to keep. Every one of us has a charge to keep and you have the courage and the fortitude to break barriers that will not only change you, but it will inspire the people that are watching you. We all have someone that's watching us before real change occurs. There's one thing that you must start with what you expect immediately and what you impact immediately and permanently is yourself. Like Michael Jackson says, look at the man in the mirror. In our case, is look at the sister in the mirror. Change requires a, a multitude of things and I'm just gonna cover just a few. Change requires, who does hit home to me, you guys? Change requires that you get your spirit in check. You know some of y'all spirits don't be right. Sometimes I have to sit in the car before I get out of the car to go into the church because sometimes I already know mm -mm, my spirit, my spirit ain't right. Let me get my spirit in check. The people came to Deborah because she was approachable, kind and wise. She was not only the judge during that time, but people respected her because she understood the assignment. She had to have her spirit in check because everybody was watching her and she had to give impartial judgments to people about their lives, about, about the issues that were going on. And sometimes if your spirit ain't right, you're not going to give the right answer. Mm -hmm. Let the church say amen. Change also requires you to increase your capacity to be honest with yourself behind closed and in front of open doors. Deborah did not have social media where she could become anybody without the consequences of immediately getting out, getting found out. Excuse me. She could not hide behind a meme or Facebook post. She was out in the open for the world to see at all times. And even when she wasn't visible to the eye, she held a standard because she knew if anybody was watching her, God was, and God knew all the details of her life, just like God does with us. Change also requires tireless work. In verse five, the tree where she met, the people to the judge was named the tree of Deborah. That's where she dwelled, and dwell means she lived there. How many of us live 
at our jobs. Some of y'all live at church. Mm-hmm. Live with y'all kids. Just all in their business. Just, just all in their business. They grown. Let them alone. Right? Some of us dwell in relationships. No, we don't need to still be in some of those relationships. Uh-huh. I'm going to just keep on going down the list. Dwell in some friendships. D- uh, dwell in some habits. Just, just, just living in those places. Just <sighs> living at Krispy Kremes. Oh, I know because when that red light come on, y'all live in that line. Mm-hmm. Just live in some of those places. But like her... How many of us have thrown in the towel? Scripture reads that she dwelled there. That means she spent so much time there that they named it after her. And how many of us have thrown in the towel? This pandemic has made many of us lazy, unmotivated, withdrawn, and disconnected. Some of us are physically and spiritually just disconnected. It's time for all of us, for you, for me, to get back to life. Just know that you will not be held hostage by this pandemic. We will no longer be held hostage by this pandemic or anything that does not allow you to be fruitful, hardworking, like God has called you to be. You have been chosen to do the work that no one else will do. You are the unexpected change. Know that you have decided to do it different. This time, decide to do it different. You have to make up in your mind that I'm going to go I'm going to do it different this time. I'm not going to do it the same way any longer. I have decided that I was not going to do it the same way. I'm not going to be the same mother or the same wife or the same pastor or the same friend. I am going to do it different this time. Embracing a new era of innovation for greater service means you can't do it. can't be business as always. You have to be open to change. You can't lose weight eating the same old way. Y'all stop that foolishness. Talk about, oh, girl, I'm going to lose weight. But every time I see you, you and that Popeye's line, you know that. Popeye's line off of Memorial Parkway would be real long. Not that I be at Popeye's all the time. I just, when I drive past, I see the sign. I see the line just be real long. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. (laughs) You can't get married if you don't change your singleness pattern. You want to be married? You got to stop doing single stuff. You got to start doing things that you think married women would do. Or you need to surround yourself around women that are married. Happily married. Uh, They could be struggling in their marriage a little bit, but you need to change your friends, right? You have to, in order to embrace a new era of innovation for greater service and service, meaning in your home, in your church, you have to be open to change. You can't be joyfully single if you don't change the people you keep a creep. I mean, keep, uh, keep, I mean, keep. No, some of y'all creep with. Come on now. You can't raise strong, loving, compassionate children if you don't change the way you influence them when no one is looking. Just because Medea did it that way doesn't mean that it'll work for you and your children. Deborah is a key part of this change in this era. God handpicked her just as you have been handpicked. You are a key part in your change, the change in your family, the change on your job, the change in your church, the change in your home, the change in your sister circle, the change in the missionary society. Ministry can't be business as usual. We all have a responsibility to reinvent ourselves for the benefit of bringing people to Christ. Christ and innovating our churches. Things can't be the same as usual. And understand, especially as women, people will use your worth but fail to acknowledge your existence in humanity. Just know that God sees you. Don't sit on the back burner, on the back bench, uh, uh, what they say in sports. Don't ride pine just because nobody will ask you. We all have something to give in ministry. We all have something to to do. And God has selected you for this season. And it doesn't matter your age, whether you're in your 20s or in your 60s. God still has something for you. You have been chosen. So many of you today are hiding behind and with in the church walls and you are too consumed with the compromising indig- indignation indignation of your own insecurities and falls to experience real change in your life just as many of you come sunday after sunday 
thirsty and never taking a drink of God's living water. Why do you even come to church? Why do you pray? Why do you do what you do and never get free? Many of you sisters are sippers. You know, like tea, you know how we sip the tea with the pinky up. And because, of course, sipping is much more ladylike. As my husband says uh, often, boo-boo, some of you all need to pour into a big cup and take a big old gulp and go ahead and risk it all. It's time to believe and expect something different. It's time for you to expect an unexpected change to come. Change is described in the dictionary to make or become different. I describe change as an intense carnal expression of our intellectual choice. So if you select to lock down the stronghold, then that becomes your agent of change. So if stealing is your stronghold, then that is the agent that makes you and keeps you a thief. The Bible reads in John 8, and 36 so if if the sun sets you free you are free indeed so even if you make an attempt to free yourself you can't do it ha without the power of God so woman of God I don't know who this may be for today but stop hiding holding yourself hostage to what people think they know about you don't be ashamed of the life you've lived the mistakes you have made and the challenges you have faced Woman of God, change comes in your spirit before you are changed in life. Life proves to distribute all sorts of unexpected opportunities to give up, run, hide, blame, or even shame other people into lonely places. Women are notorious for the mistreatment of other women. But even if you fail in that area, just believe that your unexpected change is coming. Change is difficult because it requires you to work past the pain and to face your own truth. You gotta be ready though. What's your motivation for change? Who's your motivation to change? Your kids? The real, real housewives of Atlanta, the soap opera characters of General Hospital. Do, does that still come on? Days of our lives. That, that was my mom's days of our lives. I often tell people that I'm going to do my very best to get healthy because I don't want my, my demise to be your motivation to change. You know how people do. They wait till you die and then tell you how they're going to change their life, especially kids. You know, kids are notorious for that. They wait till mama die and, and, and cry over mama's grave, how they was going to go back to school and how they're going to change their life. I don't want nobody doing that for me. I, my sisters, I love you, but I don't want you crying over my casket. Uh, over my demise because I didn't do my part to change, to change the way I live, to change the way I eat, the way, change the way I think, to change my spiritual health, my, my physical health, my, my mental health. I don't want, I don't want to be that kind of motivation. I don't want you. I I'm responsible for my change and you are responsible for yours. We need each other and God has it planned that way. Change takes work and you must be willing to do the work. It takes courage. It takes integrity. It takes gaining a new perspective on your life. Your unexpected change. Oh, it will find you. God will change directions just to get to you. Your unexpected change will give you new life. But what? What they didn't know was Deborah's unexpected change was more than a title, a task. It was a call to action. See, they didn't see the fight in her spirit. Most people don't see the fight in your spirit. Hmm. Sometimes they just see you when you're down and trotting. But God will give you the strength to get back up. God will whisper, you are healed. So keep on moving, my sister. You are strong. So keep on fighting. You are smart. So keep on thinking. God is saying you are mine. So keep on standing. And Jesus is the unexpected change. Choosing you to do the very thing you thought you could not. My dear hearts, I know you think you will never find a mate. For some of us that have been married and that have lost spouses, I know you think the grief is too much to bear. I'm just saying, hang on a little while. 
your cha unexpected change is coming. I know you think that your marriage is going to end. Hang on just a little while longer. Your unexpected change is on the way. I know you think school will take forever. For some of us that have gone back to school, people keep trying to inspire me to go back to get my doctorate degree. Um, I'm going to leave that to all of you. You wonderful doctor, doctorate of degrees seeking individuals. Um, but um, God, I'm saying hang on in there just a little while longer. I know you think that debt will never end, that the weight will never come off, and that the pain will never end. Just hold on for life, dear child, dear love, dear sister, because your unexpected change has come. Just hold on for a little while. God is still doing everything that God promised. Your unexpected change is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. I thank you, Father God, right now for my sisters in the room that desire an unexpected change. An unexpected change in their finances right now, God. I speak right now, Father God, that you would replenish everything that they poured out. Father God, an unexpected change in their health, dear God, in the name of Jesus, that you would hear their bodies right now, Father God. Whatever the doctor said in the name of Jesus, Father God, we are expecting an unexpected change. Father God, we just thank you, Father God. Help us, Father God, to be open and wise and strong and honorable, Father God, like our sister Deborah, Lord. We just thank you, God, for this time of worship and ministry, God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be the women in this era seeking and looking and urging one another, God, for that unexpected change. God be with you, my sisters. Thank you. I love you. And keep on pushing and trusting God for that unexpected change. Something, yeah, yeah, something about the name Jesus. Oh, yeah, something about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. It is the sweetest name. Sweetest name, my Lord. Y'all know he won't leave 
We'd like to thank you for joining us this morning for our missionary morning worship service. If you would like to give to this ministry, you can do so by going to our website at www.philipscmechurch.org, where you will see tabs for GiveLify and PayPal. If you would like to mail in your donation, you can do so, Philip CME Church, P.O. Box 3917, Huntsville, Alabama, 35810. And remember the $25 asking for our missionary day. In the form of announcements, we do have our men's day observance that will be on the second Sunday in February. Please check our website and your email for further information. 
We'd like to thank Reverend Jaretha Wright again for being our guest preacher, and we hope that you were inspired by the message that she gave. We love you, we bless you, and we want you to know that we are always here for you because we are Phillips. Thank you.